again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial for you. With the fall and winter season coming up, I thought it would be appropriate to start doing some hat tutorials. And this is one of my favorite hat patterns. This is called the Divine Hat. And it is really simple. It works up fast and it is lovely. Yes, absolutely love it. Also, I do have a link to the free written pattern by Sarah Arnold, and that is on Ravelry. Now, this particular hat I did in Red Heart Super Saver Ombre, which I think it came out great. This is, I believe, the colorway of Anemone. Don't say that too fast. You might hurt yourself. <laughs> um, very, very easy. And then I also have another example, same exact pattern. And this is uh, Red Heart Colorscape in the colorway of Dublin. Now, for this particular pattern, you are going to need a worsted weight of yarn and two sizes of hooks. Now you're gonna start off with a size J six millimeter hook. And then when you get to the brim, swap off to a size H five millimeter hook. Now, of course, this may vary based on your gauge and your tension, but I found that it worked out just fine for me as far as doing an adult sized hat. So for today's example, I'm gonna be using Red, no, sorry, not Red Heart. This is Lion Brand. Lion Brand Pound of Love in the colorway of Elephant Gray. All right, this video is not sponsored, but I do like to let you know what it is that I use, of course, so that, of course, if you want to duplicate the results, you can. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, round one. So, there are, of course, a couple of different ways in which you can do this, one of which is to chain, you know, like four or five, and then do a slip stitch to create a ring. Another way is to chain up three and then do your double crochets into that first chain. I think today we're going to chain four and then slip stitch into that first chain. There are, you know, different ways. I would say there is no set way of starting, but, you know, to each their own. So after creating your ring, chain up two, and then 15 double crochets into the center ring. Now, this is my preferred method um, some people, they start with a chaining up of three and have that count as their first double crochet. Me, I like to chain up two to give us the height, but not count it as an actual stitch. So I've already got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. By the way, yes, I am using the size J hook right now. So just to double count, I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 and 15. Great. Okay. So from here, slip stitch into, <clears throat> excuse me, into the top of that first double crochet, not this chaining of two, but into that first double crochet slip stitch into the top there. And shaboom. Then you can cinch up your tail, sew in your end, and you are good to go for round two. Okay, round two, very, very simple. I'm gonna start by chaining up two, and then around every double crochet, we're going to do a front post double crochet. 
Now, again, be careful that you don't go around this first chaining up of two. We're going to go around the post of this first double crochet. So going around and do a front post double crochet. And that is really all we're going to do for the entirety of round two. Just front post double crochets all the way around. Very simple. And what I really like about this pattern is that for the most part, you're not working into actual stitches. You're working into posts, you know, working around posts or into stitch spaces. So this pattern goes very, very quickly compared to some others. So I do like it very much. So we're just doing front posts. And we're not increasing at all. So by the end of the round, we should have still 15 stitches, but they're going to be front post stitches. And then we've got one more. And yes, I am going to double count because that's what I do. And it is puckering a little bit, but don't worry about that. We will be doing an increase on the next round. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 15. Perfect. Okay, so at the end of round two, again, do not go into this chaining of two. Go into the top of the first front post double crochet with a slip stitch. And there you go. That is the end of round two. Okay, round three. Again, start off by chaining up of two. Now this is where we are going to actually start increasing. So around, again, avoid this little chaining of two, but around the front post double crochet, do a front post double crochet. And then in between the stitches, create a double crochet. So in between this one that we just worked and the next one, do a double crochet. So in the space in between, just a regular double, double crochet, and then front post around the next front post, and then double crochet in between, front post around the front post, double crochet in between, and do this all the way around. So by the end of the round, we will have a total of 30 stitches. So yes, as you can see, it goes by pretty darn quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna meet back up with you uh, in a little bit for the ending of this round, and I will see you shortly. Okay, so I'm almost done with round three, but you guys know I like to touch base. So I just have four more stitches to do because I only have two more front post stitches left. So front post around the front post, stitch in between, front post around the front post, stitch in between, and then slip stitch into the top of that first front post. And that is the end of round three. It's got such a lovely texture to it already. I love it. All right. All right, so for round four, it's actually gonna be very, very similar to round three. We aren't going to be increasing. We're actually going to be following suit with what we did with round three. It'll make sense in a moment. So start by chaining up two and then front post around this first front post. 
and then do a double crochet in between our first front post and our double crochet. So we're still maintaining that texture, but we're not going to be increasing. Then front post around the front post. And double crochet in the space in between the front post and the double crochet. Front post around the front post double crochet in between the front post and the double crochet, front post around the front post, and in between the front post and the double crochet, do a double crochet, and so on and so forth for the rest of this round. And then when you are approaching the end, so our last front post is right here, as you can see. So you would front post around this front post, double crochet in the space in between, and then finish up the round by doing a slip stitch into the top of this first front post double crochet stitch. And that is round four. So I will meet back up with you for round five. Alrighty, so we're going to be doing another increase round. So rounds five and six are actually going to be the same. So to start off, start by chaining up two. And then continue on by doing a front post around the front post. And then in between the front post and that double crochet, two double crochets. So we're going to be starting to create a bit of a fan and it is going to get bigger as we go along. But right now it's just going to be two doubles. So front post around the next front post and two double crochets in the space in between the front post and the double. Front post around the front post, two doubles in between, front post around the front post, two doubles in between, front post around the front post and two doubles in between. And that is all you need to do all the way around. And because this is offset, it will create a spiral, which I absolutely love. Now, you're gonna keep on going in the same fashion all the way around, where you're gonna end here by doing a front post around the front post, and in this space, two double crochets, and then slip stitch to the top of your first front post double crochet stitch. And you know what? I think I will start off round six for you guys. So give me a moment. Let me finish round five and I will be right back. Okay. All right. So as promised, here I am with round six, which is really a repeat of round five. So chain up two front post around the front post and then in the space in between the front post and the two double crochets two double crochets front post around the front post And then two double crochets in the space in between the front post and the two doubles. So right in here, two doubles. So basically we are doing a, a slow, gradual increase while maintaining stitch count for a couple of rows and then building up, maintain, build up, maintain, going back and forth between the two. So we did our two doubles, 
front post around the front post. Two doubles in the space in between. Front post around the front post. And two doubles in between. So keep on keeping on in the same fashion all the way around until you have your last front post, which you're going to front post around, two double crochets in the space in between, and then slip stitch into the top of that first front post double crochet stitch, and that will be the end of round six. Alrighty, so for round seven, eight, and nine, we are going to be starting with an increase and then following suit with what we've done. Just like we did before, where it was two doubles, now we're gonna be bumping it up to three. So start off by chaining up two, front post around the front post, and then in the space in between the front post and the two doubles, do three double crochet stitches. like so. So it, it has this gradual increase going on. So we've got three doubles, front post around the front post, then three doubles in a space in between, front post around the front post, three doubles in between, and so on and so forth for the rest of round seven. Front post around the front post. Three doubles in between. See, like I said before, you're going into the spaces, not actually into the stitches. So it does go by pretty darn quickly and you can already see it's it's starting to spiral a little bit it's so pretty all right so then when you have come full so full circle uh you're going to of course do your front post in this front post three double crochets into this space and then slip stitch into the top of this first front post double crochet and then for rounds eight and nine, you're gonna be doing the same thing. So you're gonna be doing a front post, well, chaining up of two, front post around the front post, and three double crochets into the space, front post around the front post, three double crochets into the space, front post around the front post, three double crochets, etc., etc. So that's rounds seven, eight, and nine. So it's three rounds of the, the threes, and uh, then we shall proceed with another increase. And we are flying right by, aren't we? All right, so I'm going to finish up round seven, eight, and nine off camera, and then I will be back with the next round. All right, I shall see you shortly. Alrighty, so for rounds 10, 11, 12, and 13, we are going to be doing very similarly to what we have been doing. We are going to be increasing once again and then maintaining the stitch count. So as you can see down here, we have two rounds of the twos. We've got three rounds of the threes. And now we're going to be building it up to fours. So Start by chaining up two as per usual. And then front post around the front post as per usual. And then in between the front post and the three doubles into that space, four double crochets. So two, three, and four. 
front post around the front post. There we go. And then four double crochets in between. Now, at this point, this really is where I vary from the original pattern. Um, because now I say, now th this is this is what I say, this is what I do, this is not what I'm saying that you must do, but um, what I was saying before was that it's uh, rounds 10, 11, 12, and 13. That's, that's four rounds where you're doing the, the grouping, the shell of four. Uh, however, in the original pattern, it's seven rounds of this same grouping of four. Now, me personally, I found that that was a bit much and I really didn't need that much of a length or height to the hat. I found that four rounds worked just fine for me. You can, of course, add more or less depending upon your size requirements. Now, keep in mind that after we do these rounds with our shells, we are going to be adding a brim to our hat, which is going to add approximately, I would say, an mm, inch and a half to the height of the hat. And if you don't want it to go too low over your ears, then you might want to refrain from doing seven full rounds. That's why I like to do four rounds with these clusters of four doubles. All right. So for the rest of the round, really quite simple. Just keep on keeping on in the same way. And you can see how it's really starting to curve and to spiral. It's so pretty and so simple. Best of both worlds. So keep on keeping on by doing your front post around the front post four doubles in the space in between and then when you have come full circle front post around the front post four doubles in the space slip stitch to the top of the first front post and then do the same thing for at least three more rounds okay by doing your chaining up of two front post in the front post and four doubles into that first space. So me personally, like I said, rounds 10 through 13, this is exactly what I do. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, after that, we are going to start in with the brim using our smaller hook, the size H. But right now, yep, we're still using the size J. So that being said, I will meet back up with you after I am done with round 13 and we'll start on the brim. Okay, I will see you shortly. Okay, so we're up to round 14, and I did try on the hat to see about where I am as far as where my ears are, and this edge came to about the tops of my ears, which is fine with me. So, I swapped over to my size H, five millimeter hook, and as you can see, we have our shell of four. We've got one, two, three, and four rounds of the fours. And then we've got three rounds, one, two, three of the threes, two rounds of the twos. It's really easy to remember. Two of two, three of three, four of four. That's what makes the most sense to me anyway. So for round 14, very, very simple chain up one and then do a single crochet in every stitch. Now this is good for sort of stabilizing the edge a little bit. Just one single crochet into each stitch. It's really that easy. You know, we're not increasing, we're not decreasing, we're just sort of stabilizing what we have to give it a nice edge. And that's all there is to it. And as I say, I'm making 
<laughs> I'm making slight mistakes, but that's okay. Um, so that's really all you're doing is just doing a nice single crochet edge all the way around. And then when you reach the beginning, I will show you that part. Um, because yes, it can be a little bit fiddly as far as like, all right, where am I going into? So I'm going to go all the way around and I'll meet back up with you uh, at the end of round 14. Just do your single crochets, you know, clean up that edge and I will see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of round 14. I just have two more single crochets to go. And then it's always with the, the single crochet rounds that's like, oh God, where do I go into? All right, see this little guy right here, that's our chaining up of one. This right here, that is the single crochet. You know, it can be like, oh God, where do I go? All right, so yeah, it's not into here, not into that little guy. It's this little guy right here, right in there. Because if you're going to try to go into that chaining up of one, you're going to change your stitch count. And also, you're going to give yourself a headache trying to get into that really tight stitch. So we're just going to slip stitch into that first double, sorry, that first single crochet. Excusez-moi. All right. And that is the end of round 14. Okay, round 15 we are going to do double crochets because that's the foundation for the, the ribbing of the brim. So chaining up of two. Again, this does not count as a stitch. It's just giving us some height and some volume, like a great conditioner. So uh, into that first stitch right there, double crochet. And just do a double crochet into each of our single crochet stitches all the way around. Nothing fancy, nothing schmancy, just doing double crochets because like I said, this is going to be the foundation for the, the ribbing of the brim so that we can do front and back post double crochets, which is my favorite way of making a brim for a crocheted hat. So go all the way around with your double crochets and be careful right in here. This, this is not a stitch to go into. It's this little guy. This is your last one. Again, it can be a little bit confusing with your single crochets, but this is the last one right here. And then slip stitch into the top of your first actual double crochet not the chaining of two. Naughty little guy trying to confuse us. So I will meet back up with you for round 16 and 17. All right, see you in a bit. Alrighty, so we are in the home stretch. Round 16 and 17 are going to be essentially the same thing. And so basically we have our double crochets set up here for the foundation of the brim. Now, I, like I said, I like to use this for a lot of hat brims because I find that it really finishes up the hat very nicely. So we're going to start by chaining up two. And again, doesn't count as a stitch, just like this little guy down here. And going to do a front post around the first double crochet. And then a back post around the next. So instead of going around the front, we're going around the back and capturing the post and doing a back post double crochet. And it creates a really nice ribbing for the brim. So front post around the next and then back post. and then front post and back post and front post. Oop, I didn't get all my plies. There we go. Front post and 
back post. And so just keep doing this all the way around with your alternating front and back posts. And I will meet back up with you around here to finish up round 16 and to start round 17. So pretty. All right, I will see you in a moment. One second. All right, so I'm almost at the end of round 16. I, I like to touch base with you guys. You know, I can't help it. Just got a few more of these front and back post double crochet stitches to go. Got this front post right here, like so. And then, now if you miscount by one, which I think I might have done, it's not a big deal. It is not a catastrophe. It's fine, because who's going to know? <laughs> so into the top of this front post right here, do your slip stitch. Shaboom. Looks so nice and pretty. And then for round 17, chain up two and resume just as we have been doing by doing front posts around the front posts and back posts around the back posts. Now, me personally, I think that two rounds of ribbing works just fine. In the original pattern, it said for three rounds of ribbing. Personally, I think that's a bit much. Personal taste, personal preference, you know, to each their own. Just like the number of rounds of the four double crochet shells, you know, it is a matter of personal preference. If you want something more like a, a slouchy hat, yeah, go big. Go big or go home. But hey, you know what I always say? March to the beat of your own bongos and you do you, boo. Sure, you know, make this your own. Patterns, ultimately, I would say patterns are a, a framework and a, a springboard, a jumping off point for us to tweak and make things more our own. So that is all that you have to do. And, you know, go all the way around. And then, so you would front post in the front post, back post in the back post, front post in the front post, and then, yep, slip stitch to the top of that first front post double crochet stitch. And there you go. A lovely hat, very simple. Pretty darn easy, I think, and it is gorgeous. Yes. So, as always, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, the timestamps and the link where you can find this pattern will be in the description box down below, as always, as well as some other links as well. If you want to help support the channel, always appreciated, never expected. So listen, guys, if you liked it, Leave a little thumbs up button down below. Always appreciate your appreciation. And until next time, you know what to do. I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.